Everybody is doing well, feeling good, feeling healthy. I know it's uh, like allergy season now. A lot of people I know have been suffering from that and home with colds and things like that, you know. So uh, take care of yourself. Eat lots of, you know, healthy foods, uh, fruits and fresh vegetables and things like that. And um, I tell I'm stalling, right? I'm just trying to wait so I can think of something to say. All right. Let's talk today on the hat subject of removing stains, okay? Let's say somebody brings this hat in with a pen line or some, I don't know, some white stuff that kind of looks like salt, like they dropped it in the snow or something like that. Or maybe, you know, whatever, some kind of uh, stain is on there. It looks like... Uh, you know, maybe just some black newsprint or, you know, something simple like that. How do you know if you can take it out or not? Well, that's a, a deep question. Most of the time you can't get these things out. You can get them out if they're right on the surface. If it seeps through, you know, for instance, like if you sweat through a hat from the inside, and then it comes out here and you have stains there and stains there and stuff. That yellowish or whatever color it is, that discoloration is all the way through the felt, starting from the back and it broke its way through the front of the felt, okay? So you can't remove that because it's not on the top of the felt. If you grind off the top layer of felt, underneath that will just be more of that brownish stuff. It'll never go away. So, what you basically can remove is things that are only on the surface. Like if you spill something on it and then really quickly get it off, you know, to take a paper towel and just very carefully dab it. Don't press it. You don't want to push it in. Don't wipe it. Just dab it and let the paper towel soak it up into its fibers. Move it into a, uh, like a dry place of the paper towel. Just touch it and let this paper towel just soak up as much as you can without pushing it in okay just touch it you could put a tiny bit of pressure just so it's touching it and just watch the paper towel just soak it up and stuff any of you guys who do uh, watercolor art know about that like if you're if you're watercolor painting and you make a mistake you could always take a dry brush you just take your brush and just go like this get all the water and paint off it really fast and you touch the dry brush to the puddle of you know paint that you just made the mistake with and that dry brush soaks up all the water and gets rid of it. It reverses what you just did. Same thing with a paper towel. It basically, that dry paper towel will just cause all the water to go to it, like osmosis or whatever, and um, it'll soak it up. So it's the same kind of thing. You basically want to uh, catch the stain really quick if it happens. Like uh, if it's on the snow or something, get it out fast. Don't let that stuff soak through it. You know, just in case there is a salt or some impurities in the water there, you don't want it to just sink in. You want it to only be on the surface so you could grind out that very top layer of felt. Um, and that's okay. If you're dealing with fur felt, underneath it, the felt is just more felt and more felt and more felt. So, you know, good hats are like that. You can actually take off the very top thinnest layer with sandpaper, something fine 
you know, fine, not super ultra fine where it, like you can rub it and it doesn't even feel like, you know, abrasive. Just like fine sandpaper or something like, um, even something as rough as like an emery board, one of those finger emery boards, about that coarseness. But, you know, maybe slightly uh, finer than that would be, you know, good enough. Um, what you want to do is get some sandpaper, okay, and um, not totally, you know, coarse sandpaper that's going to make scratches all over the felt, but also, again, not extra, extra fine where it feels like, you know, there's no abrasive at all. Something like an emery board, a little bit less, okay. You want to take that, what I like, actually, I'll go off on another tangent now. Um, what I like to use are these uh, sanding blocks. They sell disposable sanding blocks at like, you know, Home Depot, hardware stores and stuff. What they are is it looks like a little pinkish red uh, sponge, like a foam sponge. And on one side of it is just sandpaper. On the other side of it is sandpaper with like a kind of a bumped pattern, like ridges. Like a, almost like a broiler, kind of like ridges. So um, it's got a little bit more give to it, you know, like grit or something, I don't know, maybe. But um, they're generally like a pinkish color and um, they're really good, first of all, because it's flat, it's all flat. It's not like you're taking a piece, a little ripped piece of sandpaper and you don't want to just make a little hole in it there. Like there's your, there's your stain, right? You don't want to just sand right there because then you're going to have just like had, had sanded part. You know, it's almost like you just made a little hole in it. It's all in the technique. The technique is everything. Sanding it is not as easy as it sounds. What you need to do basically is, okay, let's say there's a stain right there. Okay, there's your stain. It's like, bam, let's figure right in the middle of this crease here. Okay, what you want to do, okay, is, it's right there. You want to take your sandpaper, flat is nicer. I like to use it flat but actually with a little flex like foam is good too because it goes around corners and it acts as a shock absorber to not make too much damage, you know. Um, if you could get these disposable sanding blocks, they last a very long time. I don't know if they're disposable or not, but you know, it's like, a, it's not like a block of wood that you wrap sandpaper and it's all like a sponge that's got sandpaper attached to it. If you could get them, they're the best. The idea is you want a big flat surface. That's why the, the sponge comes in handy. What you do is, okay, here's your stain. You want to sand all of this stuff, basically the whole side, okay? You could, you could sand the whole area or you could sand the whole hat, you know? Sanding a whole hat will definitely take, you know, the dirt off an old musty hat. Like if you just got a hat out in this city and you've worn it for three to five years, there's a good chance if you peel back this here, the color will look more pure underneath there because this gets just stained from the air itself, like smog and stuff. Believe it or not, it does that. It gets lighter from the uh, sun, from sun faded, and it also gets kind of dirtier too. So the color here and then the color when you peel pe back the band like that, when you peel it back, are gonna be different a lot of the times on older hats. It just looks smoother, it looks, you know, like greener or something, you know? It's hard to pick up here, but there is a little difference there. There. Um, so, you can, in essence, sand the whole hat, but if it's a nice new hat, you know, and the felt itself is clean, yeah, I'd like to just do one side, you know? So basically, you're not making like a little hole it's almost like a little sand trap. You're not, because that's like just as bad as having a stain. If you look at it in certain lights, you're just gonna see this like, looks like a part that moth ate or something, like a hole. You don't wanna do that. That's just as bad as having a stain. But it's actually worse, because you got a stain and a hole now. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that, that sanding block and basically, very gently, almost feathering it on the entire surface, very lightly. You're barely adding any pressure. You want to look, you want to see if there's any felt coming off. You want to get some felt, you know, off. Um, you know, don't be scared of it. It's just felt under it. I would not recommend this with certain cheaper hats, like wool felt hats. Eh, you, you, you can't really go 
too deep on a wool felt. It's just different construction. If you have a little bit like on the welted edge or something, you could maybe sand that or something. But um, this works best for fur felt hats. Um, it will work for um, for a wool felt or a light felt crushable, but you can't go you can't go deep. It's it's a very small small finish on the wall that you can't just go beyond that so um, now getting back to the fur felt hats you want to uh, sand it down okay no not adding a lot of pressure just almost like like you're touching that the arm of, of your loved one or something a gentle touch okay you're touching it but you're doing it evenly flat and even you have something to put inside the hat that's even better some kind of like round type you know uh, metal object like a, a pot or a pan or some kind of something that'll give you a little bit of leverage you can do that uh, you can use your palm and your hand inside too and just go against your hand like that I personally think you'll get way better results if you put something inside it at JJ's I use a, a almost like a cylindrical, almost like a bullet-shaped steel hat stretcher. You can get those on uh, eBay. You can find them used, too. They're made by a company, co company called Garve, G-A-R-V-E. G-A-R-V-E, Garve, -E. G -A -R -V -E. Gar uh, Garve. They're uh, steel. They crank open. Uh, a lot of them heat up. Some of them, the heat doesn't work anymore. And they're hat stretchers. There's even a little gauge to tell you what size hat you're stretching it to. So in other words, it's not a hat jack that's just stretching this much. It's stretching the entire hat so you don't leave stretch marks. And, you know, like with a hat jack, it basically goes like, eh, you know, and then you have to rub out that stair step that you made. With a cylindrical, um, the bullet-shaped Garv hat stretchers, you're stretching the entire hat from top to bottom. So it's way stronger. It's way easier to, like, pop the back seam of your sweatband or to, to pop your ribbon off and stuff like that because it's strong when you crank it. It's like a reverse vice kind of coming open. Um, but you have that nice flat surface where you can put the hat on it and it's like this bullet shaped crown thing that you put it over. So you just put it over and you've got a nice surface to sand against. If you have something like that, it would be good. Um, you could use things like you know, a big bottle or something would work um something bigger than this it would have to be much bigger like uh i don't know like a coffee can or something you know and then you could just go against it um the idea is to have a flat surface you can also put something flat in there too like uh some sort of little box or something like something like that that would work too you put that in there and you just just go against the flat surface, okay? Remember, it's very light, like touching your lover's wrist or something. Very, very light touch. And what you're doing is you're not sanding out just the line, you're sanding the whole side because you don't want a little divot, little sand trap there. I know I'm re repeating myself, but uh, I'll try to be as clear on, as I can on this. Now, what you want to do is sand the whole side but when you get to the stain part like if there's a little line here when you get there increase the pressure a little more so you're concentrating on that area but you're you're sanding it everywhere i mean increase the pressure not like ah, just a tiny bit try to think of it as your lightest amount of pressure you can you could increase so you're doing the whole area but by the stain you increase a little you just push your knuckles in a tiny bit more or something you know and that sanding block will take off the stain. You keep looking at it, okay, to see what you're doing. Let's say you took off just the right part of the stain, so you know to concentrate on the left part of it, okay? Once you got it, sand it all just kind of smooth. Remember, it's very little felt. You want to take off as little felt as possible, but you want it all to be evenly clean. You don't want one little clean spot. You don't want one little deep divot either. So you're sanding the whole side, okay? And like I said, you can increase pressure where the stain is. Once everything is done, um, 
then you, you could get your hat brush, like just get it out, rigorous brushing, counterclockwise only. Brush the whole hat. So you want to kind of blend the sanded area to the non-sanded area. So you just brush the whole hat around and around. Um, if you want to try to get one of those Garve hat stretchers um, on eBay, they are expensive, but you could buy them in different conditions. Like uh, there are ones that don't open up. There are ones that uh, where the heat doesn't work and they do open up and stretch. Um, personally, 99% of the time I use it just as a form to do all my hat brushing, cleaning, shaping on there. The other thing is like, let's say you want to make like a teardrop or something, you know, out of the center crease. So what you can do is you could put it down over that top of that bullet shape and then the middle comes up and makes that little bump on the teardrop. So you could form all your shapes on that. So I use those Garv hat stretchers for everything, for shaping, for cleaning, and without that, it's very hard for me to work. You know, it's a, it's a necessary item. What you would do is you go to eBay and you would look up um, steel hat stretcher or antique metal hat stretcher Garve hat stretcher, G-A-R-V-E. Um, put all those in there. Uh, antique metal hat stretcher, um, metal hat stretcher, steel hat stretcher, Garve hat stretcher. Put all those, uh, there's a, a feature where you could take the keywords and whenever they pop up on eBay, you get an email, like an alert. You could put all those keyword searches on there. And then when some Garves come up, you could snag one up. We have like four or five of them at JJ's. Um, we use them mostly for shaping, stretching sometimes too, um, but um, some of them heat up and the hat maker has them, he, use, he uses them too. You gotta be really careful when, if you're gonna heat that thing and stretch, because uh, you could burn the, uh, the leather sweatband really easily. It, it's just super easy. So you should put some cloth over it, like a bandana or some, uh, what do you call that, uh, muslin cloth, you know, like the cheese cloth stuff. You just put that over there and then you stick your hat so that the, um, the hot metal doesn't touch this leather. There's something in between. You're gonna use the heat. I never use the heat function on those st stretchers ever. I just don't do it. I'd rather crank it open a little and steam it from the outside right in the back. What you're doing is you're steaming it in the back, which first of all, as you're cranking the hat open, right? It's opening, it's opening. Steaming it in the back does two things. First of all, it makes the seam, the back seam, more elastic so that it can stretch and those stitches become elastic and wet and they're more easy to stretch without popping, okay? So you'll feel it like, You'll steam it, you'll be able to crank it like three notches, and then it'll stop. You steam it a little more there, right through the hat, so that it's hitting the inside seam, but you're not burning the leather. You gotta do it through the hat, otherwise you'll kill your leather in like a microsecond. Steam it, ah, it's opening more now. It stops. Steam it again, you can get more stretch out of it, you know? So that, first of all, keeps the, le the seam of the leather band from popping and breaking. Um, it makes it elastic. Second of all, um, it does something else. It makes the actual stretch, so in other words, if you're stretching and the back is coming out, it makes the stretched part happen where the steam is. So the hot area stretches. So all the disfigured, uh, distorted stretched part is in the back where nobody can see it and the front is still exactly perfect, exactly the way it was before you started stretching. So that attracts the stretching part to the heat when you start cranking it open with the garb. It's gonna just go and make some, you know, like a little hump only in the back. Then you could go later, steam the whole back and try to blend that and hide that stretch mark and stuff. You take your fingers, you just push it out while you're steaming the back. But, um, those things come in handy a lot for stretching, but I don't like to use the heat feature. I like to use steam for stretching. Steam on the back of the hat, right where the inner seam is, okay? Will keep the hat from
from popping. It'll stretch more and uh, it'll also hide the stretch in the back. There'll be no stretch in the front where everybody sees the hat. Um, most of the hat's appearances in this area here, this front point, you know, and then up to these two pinches here, okay, the back doesn't get seen that much. It's just a thing. Unless you're kind of short and you wear your hat tilted way back, you wear it tilted way back, people can see, you know, the top of the hat, the back of the hat a little bit. In most cases, you won't see that part of the hat too much, so you want to hide the stretch in the back. Um, if you're using a hat jack, let's say the hat jack is this thick, right? What you do is the top, see the top of my finger here? The top of the hat jack, you want to line it up with the ribbon. On the inside, you're putting it in, you line it up, the, the top of the hat jack is right here on this line, so that if you're going to pull out, 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 you don't have a stretch mark right here, so it goes in, like that. You make it less obvious by hiding the stretch mark on this line. It's one of my tricks too. So you put your hat jack in, you start steaming from the back, cranking it open, cranking it open, and the top of the hat jack's wood is even with this here. Doesn't matter if some of it sticks out here, it doesn't matter. What matters is the top stretch mark is even with this line. So even if this is out a little bit, you won't notice it because it's a band. But if the, the line is here, the stretch mark, it's going to look horrible, like this big stair step kind of thing, you know? And basically at the end, you hit the whole back with steam, and you just kind of, what I do is I pull it against that bullet thing, I pull it, pull it, pull it, to get a nice even wall back there. Instead of a stair step, you just you heat up the whole back, bottom and top, and you pull it against the garve bullet-shaped thing, and, um, and that's it. Yeah, you can find those. They're really important to work on if you're going to, you know, be a... Uh, practice a hat. If you look at some of Kevin's older videos when I'm in the shop, things that are, you know, go back a year and a half or something, you'll see every single time I'm shaping a hat, stretching a hat, doing anything at the, uh, at the steamer table, it's using that Garve metal hat stretcher. So it's G-A-R-V-E. You can find them on eBay. I don't know about Etsy, maybe. I've never checked. eBay gets them in various conditions. If the heat works, the cranking open thing works, everything works, it can be quite expensive. If some things don't work, it's still good. You don't need it for stretching, just for forming hats and shaping hats. And they're very heavy, so the shipping might be a real, you know, maybe you could get the guy to pick up the shipping and just say, hey, it doesn't work, it's good for nothing, you know? But you know it's good for something. Um, so, yeah, those are good, they're really good. Um, I'll try to include a picture of one of those stretchers uh, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And um, we talked about removing stains and stuff. There are a few other tricks too. One trick is if you have a pen mark, pencil mark or a pen mark, a nice, clean, good eraser, you know, like one of those good square erasers or gum erasers, nice and new, nice and clean, that will work, okay? You could test the eraser first, you know, on an inconspicuous spot, make sure it's okay, and then go to it, erase the little line, okay, and then go back and do the sandpaper thing, lightly, lightly. So the whole, everything is basically sanded down. You don't see that erased line so much. Um, the erasing will get rid of the actual line, but then you want to smooth everything out with that sandpaper afterwards. Um, then after that, you go to the hat brush, and again, always counterclockwise. Every time you brush the top of a hat, whether it's the brim, the sides, or the top, it's always counterclockwise. You brush against your hands. If you have one of those garb things, it's even better because you got a nice firm wall to brush against. You get more effective brushing and everything looks nice and new and smooth. You can get pretty vigorous with this too. You just want to get all of the hairs of the felt, you know, like looking at it microscopically, you want them all leaning towards the one way, kind of a big crowd, you know, just leaning the one way. And then when you get to the top, you do kind of like circles, counterclockwise circles, the brim, counterclockwise, always. It's just the way the felt is laid. Going the other way is like pushing velvet the wrong way. It just looks you know, it looks like a, a mark or something. The other side, 
can be the other way. It can be clockwise. Sometimes it's not, though. It depends. So you can test it and see which way looks better. Generally, clockwise will work, though. Sometimes you get a counterclockwise, but again, the bottom doesn't matter as much. It's just more like a, uh, I don't know, you know, less people will see it, I guess. But um, yeah, I think that's a bit of it. We, we've covered stains, how to sand the hat, um, some of the mechanics of stretching and stuff, and the garb and all that stuff, how to use a hat jack, uh, the little hat jack trick with the, with the band. That's a few cool things, and uh, I'd like to thank every single person that left me a, a donation, um, tip donation, uh, uh, you know, uh, some monetary support. It's uh, really appreciated in a serious, uh, sincere way. Thank you guys. Uh, feeling the love, right back at you. There's a love back, and that's it. I'll see you guys, you know, usually in about four days. I've been spacing these videos out. So uh, let's play a little bit of guitar and enjoy your hats. Uh, enjoy your new cool hat with the pencil roll. Roger, that's an awesome hat. Thank <laughs> you.